Hey, welcome to the Bourbon Shop. My name is Keith, and I have something special. I think. I think it's special. We'll see. But it's been a lot of talk about James Pepper. I don't know if you guys have seen this. It's like all the talk, the rave, the end thing, you know what I'm saying? Real uh, hip. And I want to see what's up with it myself. Is it worth all the hype? Or is it just... Mm, okay, it's a lot of talk. Let's get into it. John E. Pepper was a larger than life urban enthusiast. And then he was an industrialist as well. Uh, he was a third generation producer of the Old Pepper Whiskey. Now, this was a brand that was founded during the American Revolution. Now, James P. Pepper, or James Pepper, proudly proclaimed his continued use of his grandfather's original. Uh, Revolutionary War recipes, which he nicknamed 1776. The distillery was built in 1880. Now, eventually, the distillery closed down somewhere in the 60s, and by the 70s, late 70s, it was completely shut down, abandoned. Now, this was due to like this over pop, over um, production of whiskey. But the request or the need for that product wasn't was no longer there because it was a new era, you know, kind of hippie-ish, 70s, 80s, 60s, 70s, 80s. People start going towards clear liquor, you know, vodka, gin. Um, and then in the 70s, 80s, man, it was all of these wine coolers. Y'all remember wine coolers? Yeah. And it was this beer, a clear beer. That was called Zima. Now, some of y'all up there in age know what I'm talking about. Y'all, you used to drink that clear beer, Zima. You were you were in the clubs and bars drinking Zima. You know, y'all be shaming yourself drinking something like that. But hey, 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 that was the past. That was the past. You know, we got through that. And now we're back to appreciating bourbon. Okay, so... Yeah, let's not relive the past. It was relaunched in 2008 by a whiskey entrepreneur by the name of Amir P. Now, Amir P was this American whiskey lover. And he purchased this historical distillery site and reopened it, built it back up, and it started to produce whiskey again in 2017, in December 2017. Now, this particular um, barrel proof, which is coming in at uh, 106.4 proof, was a, is a unique blend of the older stock, um, distinct mash bill of corn, rye, um, multi barley, and multi rye. The wood was air seasoned for about 18 to 21 months. Uh, this allows to break down the compounds in the wood to release, release more tannins which affects the taste of the uh, the bourbon, which more than likely gives it an older taste. Well, this is what the word is, that it doesn't taste, it tastes older than, than a five and a half year bourbon, which is what this is, five and a half years. But perhaps that air um, seasoning uh, contributes to that older taste. Now, the bottle is a recreation of the historic bottle of 1945. And so this is a really good looking bottle and we're interested on in what's on the inside now the cost is 59.99 which i don't know why 60 bucks 59.99 100 six proof 0.4 five and a half years let's go to the nose Right away, I'm getting a lot of nice oak. Toasted oak, maybe some walnuts. A lot of spices, like cinnamon. The rich vanilla is coming across on the nose. So far, so good. Ah, not bad, not bad. Nice nose. All right. Let's go for the palate.
Okay. Now I need to keep in mind that this is five and a half years old. Because to be honest with you, it has a much older taste to it, actually. So this must have been stored in the upper Rick House areas. And perhaps that air seasoning with the wood has a lot to do with that. Um, you get some dark notes, dark fruit. Um, like raisins or um, dates. Let's go in for another sip. Yeah. This actually has a lot of layers to it. Because I'm outside of the, the dark fruits, I'm also getting something more light. Like, uh, oh man. Maybe a nice light cherry note. This is not a weeded bourbon, but it sort of reminds me of that cherry note that you get in Maker's Mark. Maybe a Maker's Mark. 46 or something like that but that cherry note if you like maker's mark you know what i'm talking about i taste some of that in here there's tons of fruit tons of dark fruit flavors cinnamon a, a bit of red hot some black pepper orange peel this is one of the drinks, one of the bottles that once it get maybe below the um, the logo here, just let it sit. I think it's really going to open up. Um, I'm going to go for one more sip because I think I'm getting another kind of nut in this. Yeah, maybe... Maybe an almond. Not that, yeah, maybe an almond. I was hoping I was going to get a little, a little chocolate in this, but I'm, I'm not getting the chocolate. But what I'm getting right now, this is, it's, it's pretty good. Um, I'm not going to say it's flooring, flooring me away or blowing me away, but it's pretty good for a five year, five and a half year bourbon because again, it carries a whole, it seemed like it holds, more years in it um the finish let's go with the finish yeah that's pretty good the finish is medium long medium <laughs> um creamy mouthfeel now yeah I'm, I'm talking about the finish but now i'm getting a little bit more stuff out of the uh the palette maybe some vanilla um you know what I'm getting? What is that uh, that oatmeal cookie with the cream? A moon pie? No, it's not. It's not a moon pie, but it's an oatmeal cookie that you get with cream filling. That 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 sort of dessert taste, that cookie taste. I don't know the name of it. You guys know what I'm talking about. Mm. Nice spices. Nutmeg finishes. I said it's medium, but I think it's more on the medium side. It's still going. It's nice to the warm sensation. It's not very high proof. 106, uh, 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 106.4. So, what do I think about the price? Um, and the heightness of it because it came in with a lot of height. I think it's a very good bourbon. Uh, I think it's it doesn't quite match up, in my opinion, to the hype that I've been hearing. But it is a good bourbon. I think the price is good. I wouldn't pay a dime over it. But it's, it is a very good bourbon. Um, and I wouldn't mind buying this again. Uh, but it, it just came with a lot of hype. But you got to be careful with the hype. I try not to let that really mess with my mind and just deal with the bourbon. But I think it's it's pretty. I would give it a thumbs up. It is definitely a thumbs up. Um, but you know how um, 
Blanton's come with a lot of hype and you taste that. So it's good, but mm, okay, it ain't all that. This is very good. You don't have the Blanton's hype, but it's very good. I would recommend it. Um, is it a try before you buy? I think it's a buy. So that, that's my take. Let me know what you think. You know, just leave it in the comments. It's all pepper. Let me know if you had that Zima too. You know, we, we, we can all comfort each other together on that. I mean, that was dark time drinking that kind of stuff with Zima. And, and let me know if you ever had, uh, dare I say, crazy horse beer. Oh, we got to talk. We got to talk. But enough of that. Let me know also what you think about James E. Pepper, Barrel Proof. This one is coming in at um, 106.4, and it is batch, if you're into it, number 64. Okay, so, hey, thumbs up on this. I think it's pretty good. It's a lot of hype. Uh, it didn't need the hype. It's just, it's just a good bourbon. Very good bourbon. Beautiful bottle. Decanter style. Love it. So, I'll catch you next time on The Bourbon Shop. Like and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next time.